Hi, today we're going to continue to talk about linear finite element theory. I started a series where I wanted to go through and explain in a little bit in detail how the finite element method works. And I started with some examples written in Python, and then I started to talk about the theory. And I started with the principle of virtual work, and then last time I talked about shape functions. Today I'm going to talk about strains. And one of the terms in the uh, principle of virtual work is the stresses which are calculated from the strains. So we need an effective way to calculate strains from the nodal displacement. And that's the focus of today's video. So remember from earlier, this is one way to write the equation for virtual work. I'm focusing on the first term here. And this, as I mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a very ugly looking equation in some sense. We need to be able to calculate this in a very direct way. And it turns out that the finite element method, once you've gone through the steps that I will introduce here, is a very effective way to do this, in an elegant way for that matter. So here, I'll focus on this term here, basically the stresses. But I will focus specifically on the strain part of the stresses and how we can calculate that from the nodal displacements that are uh, the unknown variables in this case. So let's talk about strains. Strains, by definition, are given by this equation here. These are small strains. We're talking about linear finite element analysis. And uh, there are three terms in a 2D problem, which is what I'm talking about here. And they're given by these partial derivatives of the displacement with respect to original position of the point. So we have these partial derivatives that we need to be able to calculate. And it's not so easy to do at first here, because the finite element has a funny shape. And that's why we introduced the shape functions. So instead of directly calculating what this partial derivative of u, u with respect to x, for example, I will do it by looking at first the partial derivative of u, u with respect to natural coordinates, uh, xi and eta, which is uh, part of the shape functions. And due to the chain rule, I can expand these partial derivatives in this way. So the u, the x, the x, the eta, uh, and, and so forth, as you can see here. And... Uh, at the bottom, you can see another way to write it. So this is a matrix formulation that shows the same uh, information. So this is the partial derivative that we're looking at here. And it can be calculated from this matrix here. It's a two by two matrix. It gives the partial derivative of, of x and y respects to xi and eta. And then this part here, that's what I really care about. That's what's used in the calculation of the strain. Here, though, we have this quantity here, the x, the xi, that we need to, and the y, the xi, etc. We need to calculate that very precisely. We need to figure out how to do that. And I will call this matrix a, a j uh, a matrix. So the j matrix is that particular uh, variable that we need to be able to calculate. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So here's the same equation as before. The j11, the first term here, is given by the, the x, the, the xi and so forth. And to calculate this, we, we need to introduce a little bit more concepts here. We need to first recall um, how the shape functions behave, right? So the displacement of any point in the element is given by uh, the shape function n1 times x1, which is the x coordinate of node 1, node 2, node two, 3, and node 4. So this is how the shape functions are used to calculate a position for a given xi and eta uh, component. And we need that because we want to take the partial derivatives of x with respect to these xi and eta. So we'll use this to take derivatives of them. We'll see that x1, x2, and y1, and y2, etc. cetera, they're, they're constants. So when you take the partial derivative, we don't need to vary that because the nodal positions are, are, are fixed. So it's just that, that what varies is then the partial derivative of the shape function itself with respect to these natural coordinates xi and eta. And that's what's written at the bottom here. So I define this quantity dn to be the gradient of the shape function. And that's just this uh, two rows, four column matrix. And uh, then if we look at the definition here, the J matrix here that we need is simply given by the gradient of shape functions multiplied by the x vector, which is the, the position of, the, uh, of our uh, nodes, the, uh, the nodes, uh, x and y coordinates of the nodes themselves. So that's how we get the J matrix that we then use to calculate these partial derivatives. So to formalize that, here's again the starting point. We now know how J is calculated. 
And here's the this final equation. So the UDX, which is what we're looking for for the strain, is simply uh, this one here, and take the multiply the inverse of that, and ends up on the left. So it becomes j minus one, so raised to the inverse, and uh, times this uh, quantity here that we just calculated, and that's given by um, this here. So the n and the displacement. So so we have this for the UDX, the UDY, and the VDX and the VDY. So these are the displacement gradients. And giving these types of um, results. And we see for both of them, there's the same matrix ahead of the actual displacements. And this is a matrix that I will call capital M. So now we have all the information. We can put these together. And if we look at them, the, the three strain components will be given by this equation here. So it's a three by eight matrix with these components of this matrix M that I just showed multiplied by this displacement vector, which is eight by one. So in matrix form, B for this element, that's why I call it M superscript here, is this larger matrix here. And that's given by uh, the quantities that we just showed. So that's how, how the, this calculation is done, how you can calculate the strain components or actually from the displacement of the nodes and the position of the nodes and the particular location you're interested in which is given by xi and eta itself. Um, so that's, that's it for, for this video. Next time I will almost show you how we finish all of this. We can first calculate stresses, which is easy once we have the strains, and then we will combine all of this together into the stiffness matrices, which is what comes out of the virtual work equation. And we will start thinking about how we can solve that. So most of the hard derivation is actually done now. Now we're just gonna combine it together, and I'll show you how to do that next time. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.